Okay, so we're going to start talking about optics, and we're going to talk about two models for optics. One is the ray model, um, which this lecture is about, and uh, another model is the wave model. Um, when we talk about the ray model, we're assuming that light travels in straight lines. So you can see here we're using rays. Um, we're using just straight lines, and we're just showing the direction that the line that the beam is traveling in with an arrow. Um, you can see here we've got a pencil, and so the pencil is somehow illuminated, and we can um, think about the light that travels from the pencil to the person um, with these two rays. Um, so let's go on. Let's see if I can go there and then there we go. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the law of reflection. Um, it's pretty simple. So we have a surface here. Um, you can see it's in 3D, and then we can see this, um, the surface here, like just Im imagining it from the side, from this uh, direction. And we def need to define a few things in order to determine the law of reflection. Um, it's a pretty easy law. So the law of reflection, if I were to, to write it out, is just uh, theta i is equal to theta r, where i is equal to incidence. Just forgot my i. And R is equal to reflected. And so um, the, the tricky thing or the important thing to remember is how to measure these um, angles. And so notice here we have this normal. Right? And that's the really important thing. And the thing that students get wrong is they will measure the angle with respect to the surface instead of with respect to the normal. So whenever we're measuring the angle of incidence or the angle of reflection, we're always measuring you know, this angle. So how do I decide um, uh, which is my incident? So I start, this was my source over here. We told, it tells me my source. So if I, once I know my source, I can um, set my arrow. So this light is coming in here and coming out here. And so this is my angle of incidence. I'm measuring it from the normal and this is my angle of reflection over here. Okay, and so um, thinking about types of reflection, we have diffuse reflection and specular reflection. And just notice here that um, we have uh, um, our diffuse reflection and we have this surface. And you can, if you look closely, you can tell that, it, tell that it's bumpy. Um, and so even surfaces that don't look bumpy, uh, like your table or your wall, um, they um, or the floor, they all are uh, considered pretty rough surfaces. And so if you went in looking with a microscope or with a um, another kind of, you know, another kind of microscope, you would be able to see that there is, uh, there are dips and valleys, there's peaks and valleys there, and it looks rough. Um, and so when light strikes those surfaces, because it's bumpy like that, we have different angles of incidence. So you can see here, this ray of this uh, source has a bundle of rays coming in from infinity, all parallel, and each one hits at a different point on the surface here, um, here, here, and here, and they all hit at different points along these bumps, and that we still can use the law of incidence equals the law of reflection, but we get ray, uh, light going in all different directions, light reflected in all different directions. And if you compare that to specular reflection over here, um, we can see that our again we have the same source, but now we have a really smooth surface, no bumps, and so every ray hits with the same angle of incidence and then is reflected with the same angle of reflection. And so you would need to be in this um, little bundle in order to see the specular reflected light. So here the eyeball can see it, but here the eyeball can't because there's no rays from this limited uh, source. There's no rays coming to this eye. Whereas over here in diffuse um, reflection, there, the light's going to be scattered in all different directions. So you can see, you'd be able to see the surface anywhere. Um, all right, so uh, what about a plane mirror? So looking at this uh, picture, we have a bottle here, and the person is looking at it through a mirror or uh, from a mirror. So they're looking at the mirror and they're seeing this bottle. It, the bottle is on the same side of the mirror, but a person's eye projects those rays back. So they project the rays back, and from your eye's point of view, it looks like the bottle is behind the mirror, to the right of the mirror. And that's just the way your eye um, works, right? It uh, if it has rays that are not uh, converging, it'll project them back, so it sees the image as if it's behind the mirror. Notice though the um, the rays that are representing this bottle. So 
the rays, this bottle is sending rays to, uh, to the mirror and they're bouncing off um, the mirror and coming into your eye. And notice that in order to see the bottle, we only need this much of the mirror, right? We're seeing the whole bottle with this much of the mirror. Um, and that's just because if you follow the rays through, you can see where, um, where you would need the mirror to be in order to see that bottle. So if we think about that and think about the next problem, the next slide, there's a little problem. It's like, how large of a mirror do you need to see your whole body? And so we can draw this and I'm not a big fan of purple, so I'm gonna change this. Um, so if I have uh, myself, not much of an artist either, but I am a happy person, so I'll make a smiley face. Um, and then I have a mirror here. Um, and I think about how large does this mirror need to be? Well, all I really need to do is think about um, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. So, like if I were to draw this, and this to my eye, right? My angle of incidence is here. My angle of reflection is here. So this is going to be theta i. This is going to be theta r. And notice I'm not using, so this is the way my beam is going, right? I'm not using this part of the mirror. I don't need it at all. So are there any, is there any reason I would need it for the top part, right? If I were to send the ray, let's make it a different color. Uh, let's do green. So let's, um, if I were to send this to the mirror, right, let's say I just were to send it straight. If I sent it straight, it's just going to come back straight. So I'm going to have it go in and out like that. In order for this part of my waist to get to my eye, I'm going to need to have something like this. Right, so it goes into the mirror and out of the mirror, and those angles, again, are equal. So is there any reason I would need the bottom part of this mirror? And the answer is no. So really the only size I need is I need something that goes about to my head so that I could see the top of my head. Um, I'm gonna need something that comes in here and then bounces off to see the top of my head. And for the my feet, I'm just gonna need half the mirror. So all I need is half my height. Sure, why that stayed. Let's see if I can erase it. Okay. So, um, thinking about spherical mirrors, um, if I have I have a convex mirror here, right? Convex and a concave mirror here. I always remember because a cave, a concave looks like a cave. That helps me remember. Um, and I can use my same equations. My theta i is equal to theta r. Theta incidence is equal to theta reflected. Um, and so I have two rays coming in. Um, they're both parallel to my optical axis. So my optical axis is the x-axis. Um, it's a horizontal axis. And then if rays are coming in parallel to it, I've got two rays coming in parallel. And when rays come in parallel, um, then we say that these rays are rays from infinity. That's a common term used in um, optics. And I'll uh, tell you another common thing in just a minute when we get to the next slide. But you can see here, I've got a ray coming in and it bounces off, same rule, theta i is equal to theta r. And notice that these rays diverge, they're never gonna meet. And so I'm not gonna have a real image where they're gonna meet back here. But remember what we do is we can project, oops, that's not very straight. I can project this back and project this back. And so there's gonna be some sort of a virtual image here where the, um, rays leaving my surface are going to be projected back and this is where my um, virtual image is going to be located. And for a concave mirror, right, my rays come in from infinity and they hit the mirror and I still use theta i is equal to theta r and these rays will meet here and we'll talk about what that that place is in just a minute. Just the next slide. Okay, so here we've got rays from infinity, a bundle of rays from infinity, and they're parallel to the optical axis, and they come in, and they, um, by theta i is equal to theta r, they are reflected to this focal point. So anytime you have a bundle of rays coming in from infinity, all parallel, they will meet at the focal point. And for this mirror, um, 
we know that focal point to be half of the radius. So this is my um, radius of my sphere right here. And the um, position is, is denoted as C, the center of curvature. And, um, and so the focal point is half of that. So I always know when I have rays coming in from infinity, they're gonna meet at the focal point. Um, I also can have rays coming in from infinity that are parallel like this. Like if I had, let's see if I can, why am I smaller? Hmm. See if I switch, maybe it'll be easier to see. Yeah, they're still little. There we go, that's a little better. But let's say I had rays coming in like that. Then those rays, they're all coming in um, parallel and they're gonna bounce off the mirror and they're gonna hit somewhere here, but it's still gonna be in the focal plane. So I, I would get, ray, if rays come in at different angles, they're still gonna be in the focal plane, but they're just gonna, hit at different y heights from the optical axis. Okay, so image formation. Uh, so image formation, um, we can actually just use a pen and paper, most likely graph paper, to be able to determine where an image would be given an object position. So the way we show, um, uh, an object is we, so an object, let's see if I can make this bigger. Pause that for a second. Okay, so uh, we're back and um, I've got my object. So I got an object. And usually we have, we put an object at a location and we give it we say it's an arrow, of uh, an arrow just like that. And that's our object. And we always place it so that the arrow is up, the, it's pointing up. And then if we have an image, if it's up, we call it erect. And if it's down, we call it inverted. Those are some terminology that we use. So here I've got my um, object, it's located at O. And we're going to use the, the idea of um, object or of rays coming in from infinity. So I have this ray coming in from infinity parallel to the optical axis, and I know it's going to go through my focal point. So I'm just drawing that, right, this arrow. I'm drawing it to the right, goes through the focal point, and I extend it back um, down here. And now I take the next ray. I can say, well, I also know this is reversible. If I have an ray going through the focal point, it's going to go, it's going to leave the mirror parallel to the optical axis. And see right already here, already here, I see that I have these two rays meet, right? And I can add a third ray. So one more ray um, for image formation. Anytime a ray leaves and goes through the center of curvature, the C point here, you can extend it towards the mirror. And we know if a ray comes from the center of curvature, it's perpendicular to the mirror. So that means perpendicular is the same um, uh, angle as the normal. So that means I'm gonna have no, angle of incidence, zero angle of incidence equals zero angle of reflection. So I know it's just gonna come right back on itself and I extend it back. So here my image is right here and it's inverted because it's upside down and, um, and I would be able to see an image there. Okay, so what about the, um, we can do all that, just like I said, just using a pen and paper, graph paper and a ruler, but we can also then check our work. Um, and we'll be doing a lot of that, of those kinds of problems. So here, if I have the same situation where I have an object and I wanna determine where the image would be, if I know the focal point, I can use the, the mirror equation, which is also the same equation as the thin lens equation. So D zero is the distance from the mirror, from my object to the mirror, and DI is the distance from my image to the mirror, and F is the focal distance. So I can calculate either, usually I'm looking for the focal or the, image distance, or I might be looking for the focal point and different problems. Um, magnification is given as the height. So the height from the optical axis of the image divided by the height from the optical axis of the object, or a negative, the distance from the image of the image from the mirror and the distance of the object from the mirror. So here's a quick problem, um, pretty easy using two things that you know, you could calculate it two ways. Um, how far from the concave mirror? So first we'll just draw a picture. Draw a picture, concave mirror, mirror. remember it's like a, um, like a cave, 
We'll draw our optical axis. There we go. Try to redraw that. Uh, we have a radius is, so we'll say, okay, this is our curvature. And so see, uh, the radius is 23 centimeters. And we have an object place, uh, where, where must an object be placed if its image is to be at infinity? So um, we could look at the, at the equations. So remember these equations right here, uh, the equ um, that first equation. So let's see, back. So we can say one over di plus one over d zero is equal to one over f. So if we, we want to figure out where we need to put our image. So what is D, di? Um, we want di to be uh, at infinity. So if we want this to be at infinity, remember 1 over infinity is equal to 0. So if this becomes 0, then we know that di has to equal df. I'm sorry, d0, do has to equal d has to equal f. Right? So what we've done by saying the object the image is at infinity then this goes away, and now I can just set the denominators equal. And so this would be our answer, right? And so D then would be equal to a half R over two, because that's our focal distance, right? So um, R is equal to F over two, sorry, F is equal to R over two. It's not. I can erase this. So f is equal to r over 2, and we want to place it at f. So we would just place our object right here, and that's going to equal 11.5 centimeters. I'll erase this. Okay, so now here we have convex mirrors. So notice we talked about this earlier, but if you have rays coming from infinity, they're leaving the mirror. They're never going to converge on this side, on the left of the mirror, but we will see them. We can project those image rays back. The rays that leave the mirror, we project them back. And so we have um, them meeting here on the right side of the mirror. So this is called a virtual image. So what happens if we have an object, right? We can do our ray tracing, right? And we can um, we can um, take this one ray, it comes in, right? And, and so we can project it to the right side and it goes through this, um, the radius here, um, the location of the radius, center of curvature, and just goes right back on itself because it is perpendicular to the surface. When we have a ray coming in parallel to the optical axis, we are going to calculate the angle of incidence um, and the angle of reflection, and then we can project that back. And the place where these two rays meet, right there, that's going to be our image distance. And notice that this image is um, invert is erect. Okay. Stop there. 